Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do you hear us? Yeah. Yes, we should all be yes. able to hear you. All okay. right, so just quickly run through your bios and then we'll have your papers. Um, so Mario Paul Martinez is a researcher, professor and coordinator of the aesthetics and art theory area in the art department of Miguel Hernandez University. He's also a coordinator of the area of historical, artistic and scientific assets at the same university and director of the Massiva Research Group that studies the interrelationship between audiovisual arts and mass culture. He teaches cultural studies and visual arts at the School of Fine Arts in Altia. Fran Mateo is a researcher and professor of aesthetics and art theory in the art department of Miguel Hernandez University. He has taught subjects such as theory and technique of editing and montage and video games and virtual environments. He studied advertising and public relations and obtained a degree in cinematography specializing in film direction. He's the co-director of the International Congress of Fantastic Genre, Audio Vis Visuals and New Technologies and with Mario Paul Martinez. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. <laughs> A ver, pantalla. Yep. Ok. Ya está, ¿no? Sí, sí. So, hello everybody. Uh, we are Fran Mateo and, and Mario Paul Martínez, professors at the Miguel Hernández University of Elche in Alicante, Spain. And firstly, we would like to thank the organizers of, of this event for inviting us and for being able to participate in this their wonderful proposal around the fantastic studies. And also we would like to apologize for our particular accent and our relative fluency in the English language. We must admit that English is not our forte. And we are going to read a bit more than we usually do to avoid possible confusions and misunderstandings. <laughs> So Fran and I have been working together for some time now in on the studio of the fantastic, especially around the researches that analyzes what happens in the connections between this phenomenon and the different audiovisual uh, media. Uh, in pu publications we are jointly produced together, such as the one you can see on, on the screen, uh, we have worked uh, with various academics and artists to analyze the different fields fields of fantastic in cinema, video games, theater, uh, literature, and any other element that brings new and uh, traditional visions uh, to the fantastic. Fran is also the director of the Inter International Fantastic Film Festival, and both we direct uh, as well the International Congress of Fantastic General Divisions and New Technologies in the same city. Uh, in fact, we would like to, to take this opportunity to tell you what you that. This November, we will be holding our full international edition and that we would like to count on your participation. If you are interested uh, as our researchers of the fantastic, uh, we invite you to send us your proposals as soon as uh, the call of papers comes out, uh, maybe the end of, of June. Uh, in any case, we are at your disposal for any questions may you have you may have sorry well now uh, that uh, we have introduced ourselves let's get us right to to the point we are going to to tell you uh, uh, the what we're going to tell you you were the germ of this talk was was born uh, a few months before the the pandemic uh, we were shooting a documentary uh, about arcade video games in in spain when it was the time to interview Loco Malito and Grithor87, uh, two very well-known video games creators in the Arcadia world, uh, with whom, among other things, we began to discuss uh, one of their most emblematic, emblematic video games, uh, Carset Castilla. They told us how during uh, a trip to the city of Segovia, uh, they, they ended up admitting its Alcaza, uh, the Arabic fortress of his city. And they began to imagine what the, this image would look like uh, in a pixel format and how it would look in an arcade, arcade video game from the 80s with a short of a winged reaper announcing the start of the mm -hmm. game with uh, uh, a trumpet and some demons coming out from behind the wall to challenge the players and etc. And right there in this interview, uh, and I think, inspired by the enthusiasm uh, of these authors, authors uh, the idea for research began to, to grow. It's true, 
no case, uh, no case the studies of the Spanish video games that approach their own historical or religious mythology have been analyzed or dated. From this hypothesis, uh, so obvious in, in our heads, uh, emerge the objectives that you can read on the screen today. Which Spanish games include a fantastic genre from their own tradition or from their own mythology? And consequently, what are the inspirations and the strategies they use to implement them in, in their games? Since the, the beginnings of the Spanish games industry, we have had uh, video games be based on the past uh, of our country. They are historical uh, cases that are very well considered by the critics, by the, the players, like El Cid, Don Quixote, Capitan Trueno, Curro Jiménez. And these titles made in Spain reflect very well the icons of old past homeland, uh, whether from real cases like El Cid or from fiction, as in the case of Don Quixote or Capitan Trueno. From this aspect, of course, we also have many more games based on the fantastic in, created in Spain. But what video game, uh, after all, doesn't have a fantasy base, no? Uh, the door that Loco Malito and Grito 87 uh, opened, uh, in reality, was not so difficult to consider. As they state, if the Japanese use their, their mythology and history to create millions of games, why can we take advantage of these myths that identify us to make our own productions. Corset Castilla, the first case of a study today, is a proof of this. It is also the pioneering case of a video game that combines global myths, such as zombies, vampires, with the story of Spain and its iconography, its folklore, and uh, its legend. It is also, and this is important to say, the first video game that's to successfully explore this topic. It has been sold in Europe, United States, uh, Japan, and it has been adapted for PlayStation, Xbox, mm -hmm. Nintendo Switch, among other uh, platforms. The first thing we can see during the game of Castle Castilla are two clear tributes. On the one hand, uh, to the arcade video game Ghost and Goblins, a classic from the 80s by Capcom, which in its own way already implemented that romantic ideal of Arthurian legends of chivalry books. That is basically the warriors in shining armor who must save his beloved from the clutches of evil. In fact, Arcet Castilla is inspired by Amadis de Gaula, a novel of the Spanish genre of chivalry novels of great success in Spain which recreates the adventures and love affairs of a knight in Hispanic lands in the 13th and 14th century. In the game, and as happened in this type of novels, we have a search of honor and heroic bravery, an adventure through different trials, an idealization of the knight's love for his lady, a glorified violence in the battle, and so on. We even have a sort of tragic ending, like most of the world of the so-called Arthurian romance. This brings us to the next tribute present in the game, the fantastic landscapes and legendary beings that make up medieval Spain. We can travel through some of the settings of traditional Spain, such as the windmills of La Mancha, the aforementioned Alcázar, or the iconic aqueduct of Segovia. And in the same way, we can also go through other archetypal places, such as the catacombs, the swamps, or the haunted house. Always, obviously, under the licenses of fantasy and the typical simplifications of the arcade video games for the improvement of the experience, and which are also mixed, by the way, with other mythologies such as Greek, Persian, etc. In this way, we can enjoy mythological beings from the native cultures of the island regions of the country, such as, for example, the Chagaldabas, which is a monster with enormous appetite for eating children, typical of La Mancha for tales. The Malismos, who are a kind of beings identical to the Nordic trolls, or the Colacho, a bizarre character who represents the devil in the festivals and rituals of Burgos from the Middle Ages. This type of mythological beings 
crashes paths with characters from classic literature, such as Matt Don Quixote made of metal, who draws books and nice at us, or references from the Spanish medieval tradition itself, such as the aforementioned set. Well, we are not going into the situ. You will have noticed that although Carcet Castilla deals with all these fantastic and historical themes, in reality, it does so from a somewhat superficial perspective. Through mainly the aesthetic anecdote and that exotic touch provided by the narrative and fantastic iconography. To do so, it relies on the simplicity of pixel art, a typical arcade video game graphic, and gameplay. But precise enough, in this case, to underline the symbols and ideas of popular Spanish mythology. In any case, what is important about Casa Castilla is that it's a reference and a pioneer the sample of this type of game. And how, thanks to its unprecedented model, others have seen an open path to explore Spanish mythology and its legends through digital games. Its best example, in this sense, is the developer, the Game Kitchen, with its platform, Blasphemous. Okay. If if we show this work on, on screen, uh, whether or not you have any notions of uh, Spanish paintings, a series of concepts will immediately come to your mind, as well as a specific aesthetic. Uh, we are sure that you will all be able to notice a, a thick atmosphere, uh, typical from the 17th uh, Spanish Baroque art, as well as a, I don't know, a gruesome and some, somewhat grotesque theme also characteristic on this uh, pictorial period. What will happen if we were to replicate this Baroque vibe, this atmosphere recreated by the painter Jose de Rivera or other contemporary painters such as Zurbarán, Alonso Cano or Velázquez on a video game? Moreover, what will happen if in addition to capturing all this gloomy aesthetic on a video game, we were to include uh, a script around religious and its historical narrative uh, that has, it's also typical of these uh, paintings. So this is uh, Blasphemous, uh, an arcade style uh, video game uh, which mixes in equal parts the Spanish Catholic mysticism, uh, its sacred art, and in addition, the emblematic images and locations uh, of folkloric uh, Southern Spain. The graphics, the, the, the colors, the textures, even the, the, the soundtrack, uh, etc., exude in this game that air of a church, of a civilian altar, uh, where one is immersed in adoration or penance uh, to God under the, the candlelight. In fact, if we look at the, the protagonist of the, of the game, we will find an absolute, absolute sorry, uh, summary of it. Uh, religious mythology, sacred art, and the symbols of these Spanish liturgical traditions, such as, uh, for example, uh, the crown of thorns, the coffrate neck necklace, or the or the pointed hood, capirote in in Spanish, which condense the violence implicit in them and in the in the game. We can, see, we can see all these patterns, such as the pain and blood for the doctrine of Christian faith, as well as the religious paintings of the Baroque, as an emblem of an aesthetic product of gold cinema, a sort of mix between games like Splatterhouse or film like Friday the, Friday the 13th or Brain Dead, substituting hockey, hockey masks, chainsaws, and his own abominations for the aspects of Nazarene uh, Penitent. On the one hand, we have uh, violent representation, representations of historical characters from the Spanish 17th century, that is, characters that, that took place in the reality of the time, so, such as uh, this one on, on the left, uh, the Sereno, the night watchman in charge of warding the streets, the nuns or uh, the flagellants, all of them or uh, enemies in the game. Uh, in the same way, we also have reinterpretations of biblical characters and fantastic beings from the Andalusian mythology, such as the Altagracia or the here called uh, Falaris. 
Altagracia is a grotesque character inspired by the civilian legend of La Santa Librada, a princess uh, forced to marry the king of Sicily, who became a repulsive being to provoke uh, Princess Lee, uh, her fiance's uh, re rejection. The Falaris uh, is, uh, is clearly an invention uh, that arises between the Minotaur and, and, and the animal most culturally associated with the Andaz Andalusia, no? the, the bull from bullfighting. The list of fantastic hybrids in Blasphemous is large and sometimes reaches uh, such a point that we have totally crazy creatures such as this Spear of the Cathedral, cathedral a character that combines the figure of, of a bishop, the figures of a picador de toros and a Christian altar. Or one or favorite uh, characters, El Guarda Infante, a monster resulting from the combination of the well-known or mythical Frankenstein and the image of the Infanta Margarita of Austria taken from the, this masterpiece uh, of the civilian painter Diego de Velázquez, Las Meninas. We can also observe auto baroque and typical atmosphere of the time is a fundamental element of the game. And again, uh, as in the case of Cors Cast Corset Castilla, we observe the aesthetic correspondence between the cliches of an historical Andalusia and fantastic scenography, where the authors of the game incorporate layers and layers of references. That's from us in, in, in this aspect, does not, doesn't know, uh, doesn't, doesn't not research the memory of an imitation of Andalusian scenes, but to the interpretation, which avoids the strictness of historic scenes to give away uh, to a delight in the ideological, religious, and mystical atmospheres of the time. This is why Blasphemous, as in Carcet Castilla, we also find an amalgam of characters, setting and historical uh, and fantastic cases uh, which drawn from other sources outside the Spanish environment. For example, references uh, to Bernini's Ecstasy of Saint Teresa, to Michelangelo's Pietat, or the Baldacin of St. Peter in, in Vatican, whose shining marble is combined with this uh, pixelated uh, fantasy and uh, some kind of Hispano Muslim art. Any of these characters and settings are also supported by a script developed under the guidelines of, of liturgy and Christian sacred narrative. A plot that employs an archaic language with a feel close to the Bible language. There are explicit mentions of words by poets and religious figures from the Middle Ages, such as Santa Teresa de Jesus or Gonzalo de Berceo, and even quotes from the contemporary artist Lola Flores, an icon of Spanish flamenco folklore. An example of a true Andalusian accent adapted to the fantastic with the irony of the video games Easter eggs. Well, in order to finish with analysis of Blasphemous, we would also like to point out that this game uses as the main idea of this narrative something very characteristic of our Catholic religion, guilt and penitence. The painful path of redemption, which takes those who seek it to suffer at all those paths of penance until they reach communion and enlightenment. An original and well-determined conceptual perspective, which, as we say, allows the authors to connect the adventure of the protagonist with war violence and with the path of the typical hero video games and classic narrative. From this derives an original aspect of the game. The correspondence between the historical torture of the Catholic faith and the torture of the arcade game. That is how the painful aspect of the Spanish sacred mythology translates into a very difficult game, bordering at times on the unfair and twisted, which relates both masochists. Sometimes. Uh, no? okay. Ahora, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Blasphemous, in this sense, employs its script and game mechanics in a peculiar experiment between Catholic penance and gameplay. That balance between fun and anxiety flow channel that made that, as in the mystical and religious, one reaches ecstasy on very few occasions, but one reaches it tastes like heaven, one of the dogmas of Christianity. 
Well, to conclude, we could point out that Carset Castilla and Blasphemous are both created in a similar way. On the one hand, inspired by the cultural and historical tradition of Spain, and on the other, by collecting a series of legends, religious myths, and cases of fantastic fictions, which although root in the Spanish world, also take elements from different cultures. If we analyze both games, we also note another underlying characteristic. The references of these games outside traditional Spain always point towards a Mediterranean art or mythology, Greece, Italy, etc. Therefore, we are looking at two games that are built prominently on their own religion, folklore, and history. But when they appropriate other external cultures, they go beyond Anglocentric and they do it from the Mediterranean. From these aspects, we can underline that Carcet Castilla and Blasphemous show how the culture and history of Spain can also work and compete in a game that interests any player, as it happens with the most visited mythologies and folklore in the video game, Japan, China, etc. Quite simply, or Nazarenes, or Quixotes, or Tragaldabas, or our particular Lola Flores can compete against any yokai. The success of both platforms will also be noted, and especially in the case of Blasphemous, which has been able to sell more than 1 million units worldwide. This allows us to affirm that this is a model that will, without doubt, be repeated in the Spanish video game market in the near future. In other words, Carse Castilla and Blasphemous are two essential references to see and understand the evolution of Spanish video games over the next few years. And thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much for that. All right, now we'll get right along to our last paper, which is kind